Hey, Zach. Hey. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank, thank you for doing this. Well, uh, we're we're going to talk about your guitar playing, which everyone in the world would wonder why. And like you just told me, you are a guitar player playing drums that wants to play guitar. And I think that's exactly. a perfect set. So, well, you know, for this, yeah. every every guitar player wants to play drums, and every drummer wants to play guitar. But guitar was actually my first instrument. So, see, there you go. Makes Perfect. Sense. Right. Makes sense. I go to a space and play drums all day. Yeah. You know, and so I, I think you're completely right. Uh, you know, I I just told you. So I met you a while back when I was in Guar, but I also met you. I was 16, maybe 17. You guys were playing in Austin. That was the Cannibal Club. I don't know if you remember that. Place. Oh yeah. And you were on the uh, solo records tour. Okay. And uh, I I told Buzz about this and I was fucking, you know, I was such a dumbass. And I, I went up to him and I go, well, what label are you guys on, man? Like who puts your records out? And he goes, <laughs> boner, boner records. And I thought he was fucking with me. So oh, I was really? like, all right, man, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> oh, well, were we playing with Ed Hall? Were we playing with you Ed are. Hall? Yeah, because they were yeah. on boner records too. And I didn't know shit about shit. You know, I was just a Texas fucking idiot. I didn't know anything. And I think if I just would have looked at the record I had and, you know, whatever. Uh, well, anyway, like I said, let's talk about your guitar. Hey, hey, thank you so much for doing this. I know you just went through some 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 health stuff that we talked about. And you're you're, yeah. you're, on, you're on the mend. I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Um, I, uh, well, like I was just saying that um, I was... Um, rehearsing for a tour that we did last may and right when we started rehearsing i felt uh, what i thought was a pulled muscle in my bicep and then somebody you know didn't go away and somebody's mentioning like it sounds more like you have uh, maybe a pinched nerve in your neck and i'm like no no nah, it can't be it hurts here you know and and uh and then i kind of thought thought about it and i was like oh maybe it is my neck you know and um funny because on that tour we were playing in portland and we ran into Danger Aaron from Jackass, who were friends, oh, yeah. who's had a lot of his own injuries. And he's like, oh, yeah, you got a pinched nerve. He's like, you feel this right here? He's like, can you move your arm? Move your arm now. Like, Does it hurt? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, you got something. You know, he knew all, what, exactly what it yeah. was, which, which it wasn't. Um, yeah. Because um, well, I went on tour. We went to Europe. I wasn't able to see a doctor. It wasn't getting better. And I booked something for when I got back. And um, I got in right the day that we were supposed to start rehearsing for this tour that's happening now without me with the band Boris and um, my doctor who I'd been to before for like a lower back ruptured disc um, was doing some uh, like resistance muscle tests on me. And she's like, I better, I got to get you in for an MRI right away. And she called two days later. She's like, I have bad news for you. You've got spinal stenosis and you're going to need surgery. I'm like, Shit. really? So, you know yeah basically i went to this um specialist and he's like you know he uh, um he didn't have anything good to say <laughs> he's like <laughs> he's like there's no amount of physical therapy that'll fix this it's really bad um you know you're gonna have to have surgery it's we're gonna have to fuse these discs together you know and i had, I had a billion questions about stuff you know um yeah and it was a shock you know and i had to tell the other bandmates like i can't I can't even rehearse, <laughs> you know, I yeah. can't do this tour and, you know, I'm really sorry. I don't know what the hell we're going to do. And, yeah. um, uh, luckily Buzz had thought of asking Cody Willis, who big business, high on fire, um, murder city devils, who also played in the Melvins. Who well, also was and, in the Melvins. Yeah. And just to, you know, yeah. When we had, uh, um, the big business guys in the band Yeah, and he was able to do it. He was free and was, was able to, uh, I mean, they didn't have much rehearsal time at all. You know, like I, I think even less than a week. But you know, Cody crammed, crammed for wow. the exam, and um, and this tour we we're doing the Bullhead record, and we had played that record with him before, so he knew it. And, right. and yeah, and they're they're out on tour right now. They're out, almost through. Uh, you well, it, it, you're one of the few bands that have actually used two drummers. It's like you guys and the Grateful Dead, and like you know, the so you were, yeah. and the Almond Brothers, famous, yeah. And so you were able to to draw on that. So of all the bands to happen to, shit, you know, that, yeah. What a, what I mean, a good thing. it's hard for me to watch clips of the band playing without me. You know, it's a bit. I would imagine, but, but at the same time, I'm really happy that that they're able to do it because it would have put, I mean, Boris was coming from Japan. 
the opening band, Mr. Flies, is coming from Chicago. I mean, everybody that bought a ticket, everybody, every club, every worker, whatever. I mean, it would have been, you yeah. know, domino effect of people out of work. And that would have uh, 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 laid pretty heavily on me. To, yeah, I bet. Uh, I know, bet. Though, though I'm sure that there was insurance and stuff and people would understand. But, you know, and nobody's really complained as far as I know about me not being in the band. I mean, it's just unfortunate. You know, it's unfortunate. I mean, the real, you know, the, the Melvins have have a throng of diehard fans that I'm sure are like they want to see Dale Crover play drums because that as a fan myself, that is definitely one of the reasons I would come to a Melvin show. But I would rather just see a Melvin show rather than not. Yeah, you know, I mean, if, hopefully if it's, it's something special and unique that you'll only have to see once. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. It's like and it becomes that. And and the true sort of nature of your band, it becomes sort of like that boutique. -y. Your your band is so fan friendly, and there's so many things like that, one off things and pieces of merch and records and things like that. That you know, I got to see the the one tour right. where Dale Grover wasn't on, so it becomes sort of a in the canon of your band, you know. Right. So. Yeah. But I got a let, sweet let, star out of the whole thing, you know. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> I've got. I'm um, made of metal. I've got yeah. metal in my neck, metal and screws. So I'll be Fucking able to set, metal. Up, uh, set off uh, uh, um, metal detectors when I go through airports now and all that. Yeah, metal neck, man. That's a good yeah. name for a band, metal neck. There's got to be one already. It's got to be. I have a rod in my le my femur, and I have pins in my hip and my knees, and just oh, yeah. sometimes, occasionally it sets it off. It doesn't do it all the time. Right. Was 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 your condition exacerbated by playing drums or was it genetic? Did it just happen to you? They said it was genetic and age, you know, I uh, mean, but then they've never seen me play drums before. So I don't know. I mean, definitely my posture is bad and it's something, I mean, even like I mentioned that I had the lower back issue and it's something that I've been conscious of trying to sit up straight and do stuff. But now I'm going to have to be, you know, completely like yeah. Weinberg and like, you know, not move my neck at all. I mean, I'll, I'll figure it out, you know, and, and you know, I'll yeah, be you definitely, yeah. you were definitely a physical drummer. That is for sure. Right. Um, I've been playing lots of guitar. Well, that's yeah. perfect. Let's let's yeah. talk. Uh, my drum you know, houses are gone, but my, my my guitar fingers are there. Guitar fingers, and you know, you you do do your solo records, and the fickle finger of fate is yeah. just such such an amazing amazing record. Oh, and thanks. Let's yeah, let's let's get into all of it. So you start? Did you start on guitar first? I did. Drums? When I was eight years old, I started playing guitar. No yeah. shit. What yeah. was your pr prime mover there? What what motivated you to start doing that? Um, I, I was just always interested in music, and my parents bought me a cheap $80 uh, acoustic nylon string guitar, and wow. I started taking guitar lessons at the local library. You know, I learned, you know, uh, Hush Little Baby and Kumbaya, and, and, yeah. um, and I think even a Beatles song. You know, right. but I mean, you know, it wasn't until quite a bit later where I learned bar chords and learned how to play rock songs, things yeah. like that. The reason, I mean, there was an older kid in my neighborhood, this guy named Craig Wells, who eventually ended up in the band Metal Church. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I remember. I'm, yeah. I remember seeing him one day. I was like when I was, you know, probably about 11, 12, I got it really into Kiss. And uh, I remember seeing him one day and he had long hair. And we started talking about music and he invited me over to his house. He was older than me, but he, he's like, yeah, I've got a Les Paul and a Marshall half stack. I'm like, wow. And I'd never seen, <laughs> you know, other than pictures, I'd never seen that kind of guitar or that kind of amp. So, yeah. so he showed me how to play, you know, like my first bar chord song, which was, um, um, cat scratch fever by Ted Nugent. Oh. You know. From there it was on, but then he's also the one that convinced me to be a drummer so he could jam. You know, That's awesome. I had an interest well, in both. I mean, I, you know, I really, I really liked both a lot. And so, um, that's why I ended up being a drummer. Really. Nobody else wanted to play drums. I don't think anybody would know that I definitely did not know. And that's the nerdy shit that I know that there's a metal church connection to the Melvins. So yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I loved metal church. I was a, I was a thrash metal kid. Oh, right. Um, and a metal kid. Their, their um, show as they reformed in Aberdeen had the Melvins opening for them. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. um, I... But yeah, and you know, I mean, through, through Craig, like, I mean, I heard bands like, I mean, Led Zeppelin. I'd never really heard them before. I was in a kiss. So it was like, that was the kind of the next step. He was, he was super into Jimmy Page and 
Led Zeppelin too. Um, yeah. And then he also introduced me to like Judas Priest, which I was like, wow, this is really great stuff. You know, I mean, everything yeah. about it, you know, guitar playing, the drumming, um, the yeah. singing. And then a week later, Iron Maiden. So, yeah. God. So, instantly a, a metalhead. Yeah. And we need those guys. We need those like those Sherpas that, that come before, you know, that, that, that yeah. bring us in. And, like you need to, here you go. And they give you number of the beast and they give you unleashed in the east and they give you you know like they yeah exactly. know, we need we need to go watch in practice i used to i mean even before i was in metal church he was in cover bands so it was like you know being able to go watch bands play was cool i just kind of that was this this kid hanging out watching watching him play so so were you in your first band were you a guitar player or did you no, play drums in your first drummer you're a drummer yeah, yeah, yeah i wasn't okay. i wasn't a guitar player in a band until about 93 no shit yeah so you just uh, you just constantly you always played guitar. You were always like I did. I mean, I didn't even have a guitar really. I mean, um, I didn't have a guitar. Well, I didn't have like a real electric guitar until probably about 1988, after uh, the Melvins had done um, kind of like we did a tour where we actually came home with money, right? <laughs> and I ended up you know, wanting to, wanting a guitar, you know, I mean, I would always just kind of borrow guitars from friends or whatever. And, uh, and so I bought my first electric guitar, which was a, a Gibson S1. Oh, those are awesome. Yeah. I really wanted a Mustang, you know, cause that was yeah. the time when, I mean, I thought they were cool, but they were getting kind of popular, you know, because of, well, because of probably, probably because of mud honey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I lived in San Francisco and, um, there was this guitar store there called real guitars and they had one that I wanted, but it was, they, it kind of was, wasn't so great. And it, I felt it was yeah. overpriced and I almost ended up buying a, a um, a Epiphone Telecaster. Yeah. Which was like, it was like a, Epif it was a Telecaster with like a, um, with like a, um, an explorer style neck on it, like a hockey, yeah, like the hockey, hockey yeah. stick neck. Um, but then, yeah. Oh, you, wait, you have one. Wait, I wait. have a bass. It's oh, a nice. dumb bass. It's not that. It's like oh, awesome. it's like, but it's still the hockey stick with the Epiphone. That's right. crazy. Well, you just said that. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost bought one of those guitars. I thought it was pretty cool. And then, yeah, in the paper, I found the S one at a church, and it was like two fifty, I think, and. And Buzz is like, oh, that's a really great guitar. You know, they're, they're these weird, it has like these Bill Lawrence pickups in it and like a yeah. weird picture. And um, I think that a lot of people thought they were kind of like junky Gibsons, you know, from the mid 70s. Right. Um, but I have a picture of Keith Richards with one someplace. So he had one. There you go. Yeah. Well, and I think that that weird 70s era of Gibsons, there was like, there was the Marauder. Yeah. Um, and that's oh, yeah. one they did. They did some cool shit. Right, because Kiss had the, uh, um, they had either Marauders or, or, oh, the L, what is it, L6 maybe? L6S, the yeah. L6S. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which Stephen McDonald bought one of those uh, a couple years ago when we were on tour. Dude, those, those are great. The, the, the L6S is such a cool guitar. It's like a thinned out, less, like wider yeah. Les Paul or whatever. Yeah. 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 That, 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 was, that was a cheap guitar when I bought it, but now... Just looking on reverb, it's like, oh, it's worth a little bit of money if you can find somebody to buy it anyway. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, the S1 was like basically the Marauder, but with different pick, like a different pickup configuration. Yeah. It had like three single coils kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. The Marauder. Could, I mean, yeah. Pick it like a double coil. You could, I mean, it had all these different switching options to it. So, so yeah. what you don't, you do have that anymore? You don't I still have, have it. Yeah. You still yeah. have it. I have That's every awesome. guitar except my very first, the, the very first nylon guitar. And that just, it just fell apart. I almost yeah. didn't didn't get rid of it because I'm like, well, it was my first guitar, even though I can't use it. Right, but I, just I have just, it in pieces. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel bad about it, but I mean, I don't know. I, I was trying to count up how many guitars I have now, and it's like I have somewhere between fifteen and twenty, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you still record like well, on your solo stuff? Do you still do the S one? Have you ever used it? Seems like I used it not too long ago, and I think I even got it fixed up because it kind of it sat for a long time. Like the next guitar I bought after that was a um, was a, 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 a reissue of a '57 Les Paul Gold Top. Oh, it's like the first new guitar I ever bought, brand yeah. new. Yeah, I always say it's my new guitar still, but it's like oh, it's like 30 years old now. All right, yeah. 
I mean, you know, Buzz and I ended up talking a lot about the the electrical guitar company. Guitar, yeah. And I know those are kind of synonymous with Melvin's only because Buzz uses them. Did you ever pick up any of those? Did that guy ever make you stuff? I keep talking to the guy about making one. And, and even recently, we're going back and forth through text. Like, you know, what? I know what I want. I know what it's going to be, kind of. And then, but I'm kind of hoping that he has some suggestions about stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be, I think it's going to be something he's never really made before. Um, oh, kind of. I mean, I think I'm going to go all aluminum, but it's kind of, I keep going back and forth because he made buzz like a, like a Telecaster body guitar. I saw that. But, and that one's really cool. I really like it. So a lot. cool. Like the, it's so cool. The, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a loose side or, or, or whatever, but like, um, his is, uh, um, um, uh, it's not, like brushed like he does brush yeah it, but he did like brushed on the on the on the um on the so it's uh, not it looks it's like cool. opaque kind of yeah. yeah yeah i had him i i had him so i had an original travis bean and kevin from electrical yeah. like reached out and traded me he made me a guitar and we traded because oh, cool. i didn't like that travis bean i mean it was cool to have a travis bean but it was like i just didn't like the neck i was never going to play it i just had it yeah and he made me like a Dan Armstrong with even the, the sort of uh, for Micah pit guard and everything with his, you know, the oh, yeah. neck. So this is really cool. And uh, like engraved it you know, on the back, my initials and everything. It was such a nice thing to do. And, and what a nice guy, but man, that, that guitar, it's like, it's like Excalibur. Those things are so fucking heavy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the one thing where I was kind of thinking like, maybe I want aluminum. It'll be a little bit lighter. Yeah. Easier on the back and neck. <laughs> fully, fully. You know what I thought? And since we were preparing for this interview and I was like, oh, well, you're a guitar player. I, I thought there would be like a reality where there's a Melvin's where you're playing guitar on yeah. stage with the band. Yeah. I mean, well, I probably could now. <laughs> That's upset, you know? Like, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah, that would be funny. That would be, be fun. I mean, if we, we definitely, it, it could happen, you know? Yeah. Well, if it, it happened, that would mean that you weren't, you weren't able to play drums and that wouldn't be good. So, right. you know. Well, there's actually, we did, um, we did something a few years ago when Jeff Pincus was playing with us. We had two basses and we did like, a, um, it's, it was in San Diego. It was us riding on the train playing songs. And so I just played acoustic guitar with everybody else. Wow. Jeff Pincus played banjo. I think me, Buzz and Steven were both playing, or all three of us were playing guitar. And so, wow. so yes, I've kind of, and I've written some songs for the band, not many, but yeah. a couple here and there. Well, your, your own solo stuff is, is definitely, it's, it's unto you. It is different, you know? And so it seems like I kind of find myself in that same situation, being in a band where the stuff I write isn't really the stuff that the band plays, you know? Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting pers perspective. Yeah. I wanted to do that just because, I mean, I thought it'd be something fun to do. I mean, I played guitar in a band that I formed in San Francisco with some friends called Altamont. Oh yeah. 93. And we played a bunch and then I moved to LA and then we didn't play so much. So, um, I did a solo record in 2017 and I was like, I really want to play this stuff live. And so I put together a band and, wow. and you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just play guitar. So I have like a, a cocktail drum set that I have set up in, in front of me that I'll kind of go back and forth on. But I mean, there's a drummer that, that plays in the band yeah and um she's really great and and um it's fun you know so what guitars were you using in, with in that on that tour with with my band yeah um the les paul the, the gold yeah. les paul and then my friend dan who is the bass player in altamont bought me a, a supra like a single oh. like single um uh like gold foil pickup yeah and, and I just thought it was kind of a cool guitar and, and it was something kind of different and it works with some songs. Those are cool guitar. Those newer Supros, the like yeah. reissued ones. Yeah. Those are super cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah I really like I've kind of, It's funny you mentioned that. I've had my eye on those for a while. Like, oh, every time I see the ad, I'm always like, they get me with the ads, man. I buy so much stupid shit just cause you know. Yeah. I, I like that guitar a lot. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then I bought an amp for playing live too. Like, I mean, I, I had plenty of amps, but I wanted, I wanted a combo amp rather than yeah. all around like a, like a half stack anymore. And so 
um, I was, um, I play in Red Cross and I was mentioning to, I was talking with Jeff McDonald. I'm like, oh, I want to get a combo app. And he's like, oh, you should buy one of the ones that we have, meaning, meaning um, um, his wife and, and, and his self. And, yeah. and I'm like, oh, what do you have? And he's like, well, we got this uh, Fender Vibro King. And I was like, really? And I kind of yeah. knew what those were. I'm like, oh, you mean the one that, um, the one that Pete Townsend uses? Yeah. Because you know, I was thinking I wanted to get, uh, one of the, the hot rod Deville, I think, which was like the, the, uh, I've that, got one of those. Yeah. Is, that, is that four tens? I can't remember. There's, there's different configurations. I believe, uh, shit. Uh, now that now you, I think it's like two, two there's a two twelve, and there might be right. a, yeah. And then like a four ten maybe. That's, I was interested in the four ten, but this, but this one has three tens in it. Wow. And, and so, and I had to keep bugging him about it. He's like, oh, because it belonged to his wife. She's in the Go-Go's. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was in their storage spot, and he had to go dig it out. And he finally did, and it was in, it was, I mean, he gave me a, a pretty good deal on it, but it was in a little bit of, of needed some work. And I uh, I took it to this amp guy I know right away, and he's like, oh, this thing's kind of beat. But, I mean, it ended up not being that much to fix it, a couple hundred bucks. Right. Here. And um, sounds great. I really like that amp a lot. I mean, that's awesome. You, know, you plug the you plug the Les Paul into that, and it's like, oh, there's the Neil Young sound. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, for so, sure. But I think now I want an even smaller amp. <laughs> you know, right. now now well, I think I'm gonna get the deluxe. Speaking of Neil Young, man, those the technology. Well, that'd be good. The technology on getting smaller and smaller and things are sounding better and better. It, it's it's yeah. kind of a crazy time to live in. You know, there's there's like Strymon make a pedal that I think, you know, it has three amps in it. There's the, the a Marshall Plexi, there's a Fender uh, Twin and like a Vox AC30 in the, you know, and you just carry a pedal board and there's your whole amp that you yeah. line in. And That'd be it's, great. It's nuts. Yeah, it's kind of nuts, <laughs> man. Um, Plus I'm over it, big amps, you know. Yeah. I don't it's anything anymore. There's, it's like. It is a, it's, it's awesome to look at. It's a cool look, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's sure. kind of like, but when it's sounding, I think there was, we, we, the technology caught up. We used to be at that precipice where things were smaller, but they didn't sound as good. Now they sound as good, if not better. And it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's on a pedal board. So why wouldn't you fucking, you know, exactly. Exactly. Why wouldn't you do that? So, I mean, you know, buzz now he just has, I mean, it's basically a pedal version of the, the like the the Sun uh, Beta Lead. Yes, yes. And he has that and some power amps and a couple of speakers. Unbelievable. Uh, but I I want to go. Yeah, I want to go even smaller just because I don't think he, he. I mean, you know, speaking of like Neil Young, it's like he's just got a, a twelve speaker deluxe or yeah or like any of the Led Zeppelin stuff. It's like that record. I mean, live of course he's got a bunch of huge stuff, but I mean. Recording wise, they weren't using big amps. Yeah, small combo. I'm, I'm doing fucking amp profiling now with the the this, you know. Oh, cool. But I'm getting into it. Like I'm 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 willing to learn. Right. You know. I mean, just around the it. house. Like I mean, I have like a um, I have a Vox Cambridge Reverb that I think has like a ten inch okay. speaker in it. It sounds great. It's okay. plenty yeah. loud enough for here, my house. Yeah, of course. It's all you. It's all you need. Uh, speaking of Red Cross, that record, that last record is amazing. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Ah, it's so good. So good. What was, a cool, when I heard you were in that band, I was just like, well, Hey, that makes sense. And B that's just so cool. Um, yeah, those guys are big gearheads too. Like Jeff, Jeff and Jason who plays guitar, like, like every practice they come in with a different guitar and a different amp. Yeah. You know? And, and it's really cool. Like just how into gear they are. Uh, but, it doesn't matter what they bring in. It's like, it always sounds like them, you know? It just sounds like them. Yeah. <laughs> the best are always like that, aren't they? You know, it doesn't matter what they're playing. It's no, just, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's always going to sound like them. It's always just going to be them. So, so there was a Melvin record, a Melvin's record, um, where you played bass with, you guys got oh, your original stuff. drummer. Yeah. yeah. So, so, well, I've, I've, I have bass players on here as well. So what were you using with that? Like, what did you record with bass wise? Um, I think recording wise, I think it was the, uh, um, um, we have a, uh, Chris Novoselic model Gibson. Um, oh, what are those called? Uh, oh, the, uh, RD artist or the yes. grabber? Yes. The RD artist. Yeah. The, the RD, yeah. So 
that thing's huge and it's kind of too huge for, for huge. me, but it sounds really good. So that's what I ended up playing. Uh, right. Live, we, we did it live a, a couple times. I mean, that that version of the band kind of exists with, yeah, with the original drummer. And yeah. um, I think we, we kind of reformed that version. Um, well, I had suggested to Buzz, like, you should do the original band for something and he's like i'll do it but you have to play bass i'm like okay and um and so i think i ended up getting a bass like again uh dan from altamont gave me this bass of his that um that he didn't really use it was a a uh, um a ventures model wilson like oh a, that's awesome a, like yeah right style bass yep so, which I thought was cool. I always liked the Stooges, and I always liked the, the, that that uh, Dave Alexander had that most right bass. Yeah. So, and I just got it fixed up not too long ago, and I use that. I've been messing around with like doing um, demoing. I got a um, yeah a Tascam digital eight track, and so I've been playing that bass a lot. It's, That's awesome. Yeah. Those Wilson, those Wilson uh, Ventures models were, were awesome. Those are yeah, cool guitars. I really like it. My brother's a professional bassist and he he uh he had one of those forever and it's cool just yeah cool. i have yeah. two bases i've got that and then i've got a, a a gibson ebo like student model oh yeah like the the sg style body yeah oh it's that's got, awesome got flat rounds on it so it's, it's kind of it's kind of fun that's kind of right so will you think altamont will ever do something again or you got or is it just kind of i yeah i hope so i mean it'd be fun to do something there's talk of reissuing our very first ep um, oh, right. actually remixing it so um, I think if we do that, then we'll, we'll do something. And I mean, I talk to those guys all the time, so sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I, hope to do, I hope to do more stuff with the, the solo band too. I mean, we'd planned on doing stuff before the pandemic. I had a record coming out and we were going to tour, but th that shut everything down. So, sure. so there's talk of maybe this summer we'll see. Um, but I, I've been itching to do it again, you know? Yeah. Well, it seems like now, you know, since you can't do, you can't play drums, you can, yeah. always, you know, I've been writing, yeah. been writing. I'm, I'm trying to do another, another solo record. So awesome. get that done and go play. <laughs> yeah. Go and go on an actual tour. At, yeah. Know. I really miss it. I mean, I, I think it's, I really like playing guitar live and, you know, I kind of forced myself to like do that and be a front man. You know, I need to see that. I need to see that. I need to see you play guitar. If I'm not mistaken, and I know it's been talked about a thousand times, you didn't actually play guitar in the Harvest Moon video, did you? Or did you? Um, well, I'm I'm playing guitar, but I mean, I mean, you know, like, yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm actually doubling for Neil. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. his younger self, and I'm also his older self. But I'm in the background, like when the focus is on him. So yeah. I was on stage playing with his band, you know, at least, awesome. at least like, I'm like, Oh, show me how the song goes. And they're like, Oh, it's like this, you know, I think they told That's me some notes and I'm like, Oh, I don't, I, you know, just show me the chords and yeah, yeah, yeah. I play that song. You know, I figured out how to play that song. So that I was think... pretty fun. And I was playing his guitar. So That's amazing. Playing so you guitar, got to wearing his clothes, playing his harmonica, dancing with his wife, driving his car. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You got to meet Neil Young. That's just insane. Uh, yeah, I met Neil Young dressed as Neil Young, so that was pretty. <laughs> That's what a fucking meta moment that is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was cool. I mean I really like his guitar playing a lot. You know. Oh uh, yeah, me too. He's one of the reasons why I bought the the Les Paul Gold Top. You know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I was mentioning wanting to get a deluxe amp. And I mean, that definitely that's kind of the, just knowing that like, oh, he gets that crazy, he gets a really huge sound out of just that. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Who needs a well, it goes, it goes back to what you're saying about the guy, you know, the guy that's actually. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what he's playing. It's going to sound like, you know. There's that guy too. We've yeah. always said I that. Had a, whoever. I, whatever. I, I, I I had a friend that worked for him and my wife, I, I'm, I'm a huge Neil Young fan. My wife is obsessed with him and we were just talking to the guy. Like we got backstage. It was like an outdoor sort of situation and he walked off the bus and I, my wife just froze. It was kind of like one of those, like couldn't say anything, couldn't do anything, you know, kind of a moment. And yeah. It's, it's one of those people where when it's the real deal, you know, like anyone from Led Zeppelin or him or whatever, I just, I do not know what to say. 
Yeah, you know. yeah. What can you say? Hey, what can you say? How's it going? What can you? How, hey, hey. I'm in a band too. Like, who gives a shit? Yeah, um, yeah. Who funny. gives a shit? Yeah. I remember Rob, Rob Halford actually introduced him. We played a festival, and he introduced himself to me. Like, hey, I saw your band, and well, I was just like, "What are you talking to me for? Who the fuck cares?" It was he was very nice, but you know. Uh, so I always ask people if you have one that got away and I know you talked about your first acoustic guitar, but did you get, have ever gotten anything stolen or an amp or a pedal or anything? Mm, luckily, no. No uh, shit. Yeah. Which I mean, knock on wood. Um, um, well, I mean, not, not any guitar stuff. There was some drum stuff that got stolen one time, um, just out of the van, but uh, you know, I guess it could have been worse. And, and yeah, yeah. There was a snare drum I lost that I really liked a lot. Um, that was um, uh, this really nice Tama Art Star. That works. Thing. Yeah. So that that was the, that was the one that I you know I, I, wish you could, I wish I still had it. I'm sure I could get another one like it, but I mean, and I guess I've moved on. But but I mean, yeah, I've I've kept yeah. every guitar that I've owned. You know, I just got I just. Uh, I just rescued a, a uh, made in Mexico strat from a thrift store the other day. That's awesome. You know, like after after I had surgery, um, we we're taking my son to the, something, and I'm like, hey, let's go to this thrift store for a second and just look around. And, and I see a guitar sitting there. I'm like, oh, what what is it? I'm like, oh wow, it's actually a strat. And I yeah. kind of did it to see like, well, what's wrong with it? You know, and it's, it was like 199 dollars. I'm like, I'm gonna buy. It. I better buy it. You know, I'm, <laughs> You know, I've, I've wanted a Strat. It wasn't the one that I necessarily wanted, but now that I have it, it's like, I really like it a lot. You know, well, I have a bunch of guitars. I mean, like even the S1, it's like, that's not what I wanted, but yeah. I'm loving that guitar. And um, um, actually, Buzz bought me a Mustang a couple of years ago, and I really love that guitar a lot. No shit. That's yeah. amazing. So yeah. the Mustang came came to you anyway. Eventually, yeah. That's He's like, oh, I was hoping that you could use this in your solo band. And so... Hopefully I will. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great story. That's a great yeah. story. I mean, because that's, you know, I have a lot of those as well that end up becoming your favorite guitar. It's not exactly the one you wanted, but it's the one that's there. It's right. It's you could afford. It's the one you got. That's the one and I, you know, I play it a lot, you know. Yeah. I've been playing the Strat a lot because I just got it, but I mean, that Mustang's so easy to play. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. I You said something earlier. You said, I've let it go when you're talking about your snare. I I don't think any of us have let it go. Uh, it always, you know, it always sticks in my craw when I yeah. think about stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's so personal. It's such a, it's such a, we, 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 and, and we put such a, a human thing on these pieces of, you know, gear for me at least, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I love gear, but I guess it's not like, I mean, I, I'll be able to, I'll be able to survive without it. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think, I have, but I mean, it was my main snare drum at the time, but you know. There you go. I, you know, it's funny. I had, I don't know how these episodes are going to roll out, but I, I interviewed Greg Norton from uh, Husker Du. Oh, yeah. And he's never, ever had something stolen. Like wow. they, they never, uh, it's all the touring they did, all the SST crazy shit. And yeah. he never had anything stolen. He's got everything. He's got everything he ever had. He never right. had something. He never lost it. I was just like, you've got to be shitting me. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, that's lucky. And, uh, you know, considering all the touring that we have done, I think that's pretty good. I mean, that we haven't. Yeah. I would, sh I should say so. I mean, God, I met you in 91, which you had been on tour for a, quite a while before that. Right. And I remember staying like just reading up throughout and just even back then thinking god that band never goes home you know yeah right i mean yeah funny i mean yeah we've always had to work hard you know yeah yeah well and you also always you you are such a prolific band i mean jesus christ i don't think anyone's as prolific as the melvin's right. ever, yeah really I mean, always yeah i mean thanks to buzz to keep keep it you know keep the whole thing going as far as like sure this is what we have to do. And, you know, we don't want to have day jobs. <laughs> we don't ever want to go back to that. You know, we've never really looked back and gosh, you know, yeah. That I was my uh, mantra in life. I just never wanted to 
go back to a day job. Right. Thank. Yeah. And and thankfully, you guys have such a great partner with Epicac Records that just you know are yeah of yours and willing to to do all that. You know. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. I mean, they've you know they're pretty much ready anytime we want to put a record out. It's just so amazing. Are we, We're always thinking ahead. You know, we've got stuff getting ready. We've got stuff lined up. There's, you know, plenty going on. I can't wait to hear it. And I can't wait to see you playing drums again. Yeah, thanks. Me too. I, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, i also very excited to see you play guitar. So, uh, like, I said, like I said, your solo stuff's amazing. If anybody's listening to this, please check out Dale's solo stuff. But Yeah, for sure. Yeah, get, get some more of that out there. I'm working on it, for sure. Yeah. Let's, let's play the guitar <laughs> together someday. <laughs> ah, that'd be great. Love yeah, it. I'd love it. I'll let you go, Dale. Um, man, thank you so much for doing this. I know, you know, you've been laid up and, and it, it means a whole lot to me. I'm a huge fan and, and I really Thanks. appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I'm really happy that we got to work this out. And, and yeah, I mean, totally. I love nerding out about guitars and, and gear and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's yeah, fun. That's all this is. That's all this is. Great. All right, Dale. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.